देखेंगे What up, everybody? All you slimesters, welcome to the slime water cooler for a conversation with. Uh, we don't have Jordy joining us for this episode, but we do have our usuals, Cat and Manny, and we are joined today by Mr. Mark Cooper. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Doing great. Doing well. Thanks. Thanks for uh, being here. I'm glad to be here. I've been following the podcast for a great time, and it's just a dream come true to be here today. Well, thank awesome. you, thank you. Mark is pretty awesome. We we had been chatting over on the on the Splat Attack page for quite a while, and he's got some really awesome stuff going over on his YouTube, and very much a deep love for '90s Nickelodeon and just '90s in general, much like we do. But he's got a different avenue of of how he pays tribute to it. Uh, obviously, you're listening to us, so you know what we do. Mark, what is it that you do? Well, personally, I'm I actually create music in a genre that's called nerdcore, which really focuses on you know the nostalgia, the things that we grew up with from anime, video games, cartoons. Nickelodeon, you know, as a, you know, it's not a separate example here, but it's just a, a plethora of all types of nerd things that we grew up with that we pretty much um, tell our kids, this is what we grew up with. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, and he's got a YouTube, uh, you, do you have anything else that you you have your music on, or is it just oh, solely absolutely. YouTube? It's, it's all, it's all over everywhere. So everything is, um, it's Mark Cooper. So it's I T S M A R K C O O P E R, and you'll go far, superstars. This is something that rolls <laughs> off the tongue, so people know what's going on. But I'm all over the place. Yeah, and he's super talented. Uh, both the the crew were listening in earlier on some of your work, and actually Manny, while we're talking about it, before we get it really into what you had reached out to us for, uh, Manny was actually listening uh, earlier and. What was it? You you said you had a few that you really, really I, liked of his. I did. Um, I, I got to be honest. I, I, I never heard of you up until today, but I have to say I love what you do. You have really, really awesome music and your lyrics are like amazing. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. It means more than you know. <laughs> no problem. Um, If I may, I had a couple songs I really liked. Um, I have to say... Crimson Alchemist, Trust the Process was, wow, that was really deep. Uh, did you like direct this one? Um, I actually uh, did the beats for that. So I actually produced that track for uh, for Crimson Alchemist. Nice. Also, I Am Rain, Player One, Ready Player One, and Mortal Kombat High. <laughs> it was just amazing. Like oh, those beats and everything, it just flows so well. And if you listen to it on a good pair of headphones, it's really amazing. Oh, so yeah, absolutely. Keep, definitely keep doing what you're doing because I absolutely love it. And I I want more, man. And you oh, just earned a fan today. So, <laughs> seriously. Well, thank you so much. I'm very honored to have you as a fan. So. You're welcome. Definitely. And uh, I was listening to the Power Ranger rap uh, album, I guess. Uh, I mm -hmm. had the Blue Ranger rap on repeat earlier just to make him go, I, 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 I just... That was so clever. I, I get Alpha 5 in there and my, yeah, my inner child, my nerdy self was just kind of partying it up. So well, I'm, well, I love I'm what glad. you do. I'm, I'm in all different areas with that. So like the, the nerd core I do is the nostalgia stuff. So I like making music about the things I grew up with because I feel that's, you know, the most authentic self that you can be when it comes to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, um, who who like were your influences? Because your stuff kind of reminds me of MF Doom in a way. Well, um, I got a lot of different influences, believe it or not. Like it can range anywhere from, you know, from M to Tupac and Big to Linkin Park to Daft Punk to Gorillaz, uh, Delta Funky Homo Sapien. MF Doom yeah. is on my list for sure. All caps. Oh, my All God. Caps. Absolutely. And um, I'm just really inspired by that. But I'm also inspired by. A lot of the Nick shows, believe it or not, like just how, you know, you know, invigorating the music can be so you can always remember those iconic jingles and things like that. Gotcha. So what was it that made you want to go into doing rap songs and things like that for 
tying your love of 90s pop culture and into this genre what what sparked that idea well to be honest um the first thing it was i would say i was always kind of you know, i was always a nerd so it's not like there's no you know what i mean there's no hidden ability there but um when I was making music originally, it's a lot of the street stuff like everybody does. It's the mainstream. When you first start off, you start rapping about things you don't do. It just kind of seems like how in individuals get into that. But um, it was probably in 2009 when I was playing. Uh, I was a semi-pro for Halo 2 and 3 at that time. And um, I made my first like Halo themed kind of rap song. And then like I was playing the game one day and then somebody was like, hey, Mark, you check Bungie.net. And I was like. Why would I do that? The song was on the front page. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> because because the way that community works is that it's not always the, you know, the positive sides are, oh, my God, it's going to be some turmoil. And this is like, oh, nine, when like YouTube was just starting to bring more individuals in. So now everybody feels more confident on the Internet. So, you know, you get a little bit of the good and the bad, but it was a it was a cool experience. But once I noticed that it was something I could be able to do. And make videos by it by 2015 when I got involved in knowing about the genre nerdcore, I was able to find that there's an actual community for that. That's when I started to be like, you know, I love rap, but I love the rap about the things I love. So that's why I was able to combine those things together and make a fusion for it. That's amazing. That's so awesome. Cool. That's so cool though. The that that other people had heard your stuff from that very first track and loved it and were able to support that. I love, I love when fans come through. Uh, you, you, you really develop a special connection with people like that. It's, it, it's a shared I just love. can't believe it was in the front page of Bungie. Yes. Like that's, that's outstanding, dude. Especially yeah, in 09, was... no one was really, no one was really viral then, you know, cause there was no such thing as an algorithm back then. So not so. at all. Were you a red versus blue fan, by the way? Yes, I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, caboose, everything. <laughs> Definitely. And like red versus blue gives me the, the feel because the thing I'm a big fan of also is robot chicken as well. Yes. Oh, man. Mm. So yeah. Just the voiceover part of it inspires me. And I also do voiceovers and things like that as well. It's just things that. I just love nostalgia stuff. And then when I see things like Action League now, because, you know, arguably you could say Action League now walks so Robot Chicken can run. I don't think uh, there's, mm -hmm. I don't think there's no, um, no debate there. But of course, we also originals. have, you know, Nickelodeon, actually, all their stop motion made sure that other people can run as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So sure. that's why I really enjoy it. So it's like everything I grew up with, I'm seeing in fruition as in the individuals that we were as kids. It's almost in the driver's seat of the things that we used to love in the 80s and 90s as well. So it's always great to rehash those nostalgias. And that's what I love the most about it. It's great, too, that you're repurposing it in a different way, too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's a great honor. Now, when you had reached out to me previously, that there was something very special that you're working on. Because when this episode's coming out, uh, for those of you obviously hearing it now, it's coming out in March which is a pretty big milestone, but you you had something very sp special that you were working on. So what what have you got coming up? Well, um, since we are Nick fans here, and just based off of knowing that this year is the 45th birthday of Nickelodeon as well, so that's a very exciting thing. So what I wanted to do is for the inspiration and the joy and the great, just the great content that we got a chance to grow up with our childhood, I wanted to do a Kickstarter making a, a tribute album about the history of Nickelodeon. So since it's being 45 years and since we got like another 18 years before we can open that time capsule, I just kind of want to make like a, <laughs> I just kind of want to make a short pit stop to be able to create some great music that, that way we can enjoy all those things that we remember. What do you have any ideas of what you would want on the album? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm actually, what I'm going to do, is what I've seen a lot of people do, and I don't want to go this route because it's a little too cliche. Everybody's like, oh, just make a Rugrats song and now a Doug song and now a Hey Arnold song. I don't want to go that. I'll literally go from the Silver Ball era, where it's the 1979 pinball, pinwheels type type of things. Wow. Going for the rare stuff, like from the Land of the Lost Ooh. to Finders Keepers 
Yes. To, um, to you can't do that on television. Just mm-hmm. paying homages throughout the entire album with those. And including like the game shows, including, you know, of course, Nicktoons, the main three and more. And I wanted to just show other individuals that maybe they didn't, gra- you know, actually get a chance to grow up in that time. But just give them just a just a box and just let them know like, hey, this is what they've been doing for the past years that maybe you may not be around for. And then they could be able to reappreciate all the great individuals that were involved in those times. So yes. I wanted to make a yes. a project that surrounds everything. And it's the best way of saying happy birthday, Nickelodeon. Thank you mm-hmm. so much for making a network that started with just for kids. And that's very, very much in line with what we do, uh, which is why I was so excited to to work with this and, and pitch this out to everybody. Because other podcasters, uh, no, no, nothing against the other podcasters because they're fantastic. But everyone wants to hit the big milestones or the big ones that everybody knows. So you got everybody who talks about Rugrats and Hey Arnold and, and all those other big ones that everybody knows and loves. And and while we do want to talk about that, there's so much more to Nickelodeon than just those things. Uh, we we want to have because uh, this podcast is all '90s based. We want to cover as much of the '90s Nickelodeon as possible. But if we're going to do a 45th anniversary, it's going to have to be more than just '90s. It's going to have to be where it started and how it developed through the years to where it is currently. And I think it's a brilliant idea. Uh, especially being able to just pick little some of the highlight moments as well as some of the stuff that gets really underappreciated. Uh, I think it's I love it. I love the idea. Yeah, because well, not a lot of people talk about it anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's great that you're giving it sort of like a light to show because <laughs> who knows, maybe someone even listening to your music, too, will be like, I didn't even know Nickelodeon made this. So. Right. Right. Like, I mean, like little Easter eggs here, like, you know, Bud Nick was also the voice of Stoop Kid at Hey Arnold. Mm -hmm. I have a song called Stoop Kid. You know what I mean? It's just those. And then, you know, rehashing Land of the Lost when they redid that. But that song will be about all the shows you forgot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it'll have their themes, but it'll also have the things that we remember. You know what I mean? Not like saying that you just mentioned space cases because everybody talks about it, but people forgot about Alan Strange having two seasons. You mm-hmm. you, you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, it's always great to have somebody that, you know, knows it and not just kind of, you know, pandering an opportunity because yes. they just mm-hmm. heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, yes. The bandwagon there, there, there's a whole exactly. lot of, yeah. diff- whole lot of difference between knowing the content and then just trying to, I heard about this thing. I'm going to talk about this thing vaguely, all the stuff that I read on Wikipedia. And yep. okay, that's all I got. Like, <laughs> no, get, get right. <laughs> dive in there. There's a whole lot more to check out and really appreciate. And it's so many things that we forgot as adults now, uh, where uh, I see every day, uh, p- pick a show, like, hey, dude. And then people will say, oh, man, I forgot all about this show. And you have you have kind of like two classes, one class that is all I absolutely loved this show when I was a kid. And they start listing everything off. And then you have other people who, oh, my gosh, I was so bored with the show. I hated the show. I wouldn't. The the theme song was cool, but I never watched the show. And then they go back and watch it again as an adult just to see what they missed or if if they had changed or how things have changed over the years. And more often than not, they find that they really like the show now because even though they didn't like it as a kid, it does remind them of that simpler time when we were kids. And, and, and then they start to appreciate the show in a whole lot more light because we actually give it another opportunity, but they wouldn't think to do that if they weren't part of some, nostalgic group where somebody shared it and and went oh my gosh i forgot all about this and oh, go yeah. back into it which is exactly yeah. what you're doing in your own creative way and and bringing people back to the the orange era of nickelodeon yeah which is the project is called the orange tape so nice oh, nice so if, you, so if you're a wu-tang fan you know about the purple tape and that was kind of inspired by the orange tape but I was also really inspired by the Orange Years documentary. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to combine those together and then just 
just so it understands that's where the era is. But I want to make sure it goes through from, you know, from 79 to maybe the, the earlier 2000s. Because the 2010s, I know, but a lot, it's, it's so much to pack. And if everything goes well with that, the next tape will be called the slime tape. And then that's where I'll go even, even deeper in the nostalgia if we need to. Well, you said uh, Kickstarter. Yep. Uh, what uh, what is your goal for the Kickstarter? Well, the the goal for the Kickstarter is uh, three thousand, but the way I got the perks is going to be really really cool. I actually was working on it as I was talking to you, so I have something that's called like the Agro Crag package, which comes with a uh, exclusive um, orange uh, USB flash drive that has the album and the instrumentals because I make the instrumentals as well. We'll also have uh, guest stars pop up from Nickelodeon cast explaining, you know, exclusive stories. You never really knew about it. They're all through the albums. Um, also have a time capsule box where it actually kind of like the Nick box, but I made mm -hmm. it in its own particular way where it comes with that. There's also you pick a Nick tune so I can make a custom song that maybe you wanted to hear that you didn't even know about. There's things like that from inspired T-shirts uh cds stickers and also um i partner with this uh group called euphoria tree fort and they're a a uh they have something called the smell vision candles so they have a who loves orange soda and they also have a movie theater one as well that's so cool <laughs> nice. so we just call it the snick box so it's just something that it. that brings everything together so it's like you can be able to not only enjoy the project but enjoy the entire experience of what it was to you know watch things on snick oh it's so cool isn't this amazing that say, a it's... fan does a better job at this yes. catering to the fans other than yes. the actual companies doing it wow yeah I'm i was sorry, just gonna Kat, say what were you about to say well no just that um it, that's what it's an experience it's not just like a song you're providing the fans mm -hmm. and your supporters with you know a multi-sensory <laughs> smell of vision um <laughs> experience I, I thought that was really cool when uh when they came up with those for that and then also there'll be a, a poster there'll be like quote your nickelodeon moment and we get all the quotes from that and then afterwards i send it with the box to nickelodeon studios to give them a thank you so it'll be all there, like, you know, back when uh, when it used to be like, you know, Johnny from um, from Houston, Texas said this, like back when we used mm -hmm. to do that, because even mm -hmm. though, you know, we can say about Nickelodeon has changed in many different generations and it has adapted in many different forms of how, you know, the natural world is today. It's always great for if you know there's somebody there that's in their, you know, 60s or 70s and they get a book and they'll be like, or get a box and be like, I remember all this stuff and I'm glad there's still people out there that, mm. you know, even when they're a lot older and they have families of their own, that they still appreciate what we actually did, you know, from the start of the seventies. Yes. Fully agreed. There were, yes, things have changed. Uh, some things are, are, are better. Some things are not. Uh, but the one thing that I feel Nickelodeon has, has really lost is it's, connectivity with their audience and that seems to have stayed with us the the generation that was there because here we are doing the same thing reaching out to other fans and creators and and the people who watch or who made these things that connectivity we all still crave that and um now that we're a little older, we're trying to keep that connect connectivity and keep that nostalgia, but also trying to pass it to our children at the same time. And at least many of us are, not everybody, but right. it's it's worth holding on to and it's worth teaching our children. It's not just the shows. The shows were cool because, I mean, we can we can buy most of these TV shows on DVDs and we can show them to the kids, but that's, that's not what made Nickelodeon so unique. It right. was, a, a, it was the whole network. And my, my son is, is really starting to understand that concept a whole lot more, the more he's seeing what we've been doing. And he learns a little more about Nickelodeon because the concept of Nick takes over your school. He, he got so excited about that. He was like, do they still do that? I'm like, no, they don't I'm like, oh, yeah, that's oh. like super toy run and all that. Yes. Stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. where are you gonna do super toy run now? 
Can't. Park a lot, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual yeah, Super yeah, Toy yeah, Run. Much. Yeah. You just, you just go out of the Walmart and not show the receipt and be like, oh, Super <laughs> Toy Run, we run it. <laughs> I'm well, out of here. Know, I'm in the, the car. The, the greeter's not going to catch you, so it'll be okay. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, the, the geriatric at the front door. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have a good day. Well, where uh, for anybody who wants to support, where do, where do they need to go to? Where can they find it? Well, um, it'll be all on my social. So it'll be on It's Mark Cooper everywhere. There'll be a there'll be a link in the bio, of course. And uh, we actually got done shooting the video today. So I should nice. get it later on. And then I'm just just finishing the finishing touches for it. And it's going to be really, really cool videos that will be like milestones. So I got a friend of mine and we're actually going to do the infamous Know Your Stars. As oh, like a, yes. As a, as yes. A bumper, as a buffer for the for the Kickstarter stuff. Yeah. And what I want to do is we're also going to film the entire process of making the album from the writing to all that. That's going to be completely included. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a great experience. I know your star I, thing is going to be great. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that. And then we plan to have the album out in November because I'm going to SplatCon. Oh, nice. Nice. In, in nice. L.A. I'm definitely uh, going to that. And, you know, that's that's their first convention. So it'd be yeah. cool to me, be, you know do some music stuff, but I'm also doing some, you know, some, some traveling. So I am going to go to Jersey to, to the Nickelodeon, um, like Nickelodeon amusement park thing they have out mm -hmm. there because yeah. they got the big Olmec out at the, um, at the place is cool. And then uh, Mark Summers started doing the double dare stuff back in New York that mm -hmm. just started, um, I believe next mm -hmm. month. So it's going to be like different trips and milestones and things. So it just combines it. And then maybe at the end, if I can figure it out in the right place, right time, I'm going to do a slime for the release. Nice. Best wishes, man. Good luck. That's yeah. awesome, though. I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a fun journey to go all the way through. I mean, I know it's going to be a anybody knows that anything doing things like this is a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun when you love what you do. And Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to see how this thing goes. Yeah. Uh, is there, as far as this goes, is there anything else that you want to talk about? You want to plug, you want to push You're you're welcome to. Well, sure. I'll, I'll explain other things I do too. Go for so, it. So, uh, currently I'm, I'm cast as a power ranger in a series called beast hunters. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I'm the, uh, green elephant ranger. We just started a little bit of the filming, uh, a couple weeks ago. So I go back in April to do that. So there's, there's that. Um, I voice a new cartoon that we're actually actually pushing, ironically, for Nickelodeon, we're hoping. It's called um Jet Boy. And uh, oh, I'm, the, I'm the I'm the voice of Jet Boy, which is like a 10-year-old. It's like a um like a just imagine a new Astro Boy, but he's in but he's mm -hmm. in middle school and you know, and he just fights different crime and things like that. So there's that. I also do a couple fan series where I voice a couple Transformers as well. Um, I just got in a fan series the voice of Unicron, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, wow. Yeah. In the midst of the Nickelodeon projects, uh, Transformers turned 40 this year. So I have a Transformers mm -hmm. project that comes out in the middle of things. So I basically made an album. What if Soundwave decided to make a project? So he produced everything. And then I rap about Transformers. Like there's, there's just a lot of different things that, you know, that inspire and come together. Like, um, awesome. you know, I've been in close touches with uh, with Phil Moore about it because I made the another theme of the Nick Arcade and remixed that and did that at his holiday show in the past. I think it was December of 22. So we've been wow. talking back and forth with that, getting other, you know, other actors and things like that involved in the album. And that way it just makes it a full nostalgia thing, not just, OK, I'm just talking about this yeah. now. It's mm -hmm. now there's stories behind that. Mm hmm. And and that's what people want, you know. What I mean, I love doing nostalgia stuff, but I also loved pop up video. So I almost oh, want yeah. to make it. I want to make that in, you know, inspired in the project. So if I'm rapping in the middle of something, you hear a bink, and then it'd be that person talking or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just like to make sure that you know I cover all bases, and these are the things I love, and these are the things I'm passionate about. And I know there is a whole community of individuals that are waiting for something like this. And it's not even about you know, the profit or anything of those. It's just the the Kickstarter itself 
it's just covering all the particular cost. Sure. If if mm-hmm. it's just everybody just enjoys the project and shares it, and then I get to, you know, hear from those heroes of mine. That's that's all I need. That's awesome. Hey, you're uh, taking what inspired you as a kid and what it still inspires you, and paying it forward, and it's amazing. I I love it. It's just like the cyclical. Um, flow of gratitude almost inspiring everybody who inspired you and vice versa so that's awesome looking forward to all of that yeah. <laughs> like seriously man you're doing that's it amazing thank you but there Definitely. is one question i do want to ask though if yeah. you did want to pick a song or topic was about what would it be Pick a topic for a song, or Only or just, or, or or just anything, in or just pick a song to have it remixed, or Nickelodeon song. Period. Yeah. Because see, I'm I'm going I'm going full Nickelodeon because that's where. Okay, I mean my, you can go. That's where my you can, that's you where can my go head my brother lives and me. You can go Wienerville. So. You can go. Well, I'm a Wienerville fan, so I would totally do Wienerville for sure. <laughs> anything with Boney or Sacco, that would be the best. I mean. Y'all know Space Cases is my jam. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing that pops into my mind. Yeah, but... I'm good. I'm good. Um, good friends with Walter Jones and stuff. I I got stories about, about interacting with him and everything. So that's cool. Cool. Uh, I I'd say Pete and Pete, but maybe a topic would be on siblings, Nickelodeon siblings. That actually like my be brother really and me or something to, yeah. to be able to go from Carissa explains it all to my brother and me to mm-hmm. Pete and Pete. I could do that. That could cover a lot of bases, actually. Yeah. 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 Like but I do got, but I do got, hey, I do got Wienerville song. already in the list. So you're fine. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, nice. oh, I'll be looking forward to that. And Sorry. then um, and then there's a track that's called News Flashes where I flip the Nick News with Ellerby. Mm-hmm. And oh. I literally and I wow. literally go from like a timeline kind of thing is how I wow. do that song. Oh wow. That's Dude, you're awesome. like really in my everything. mind because <laughs> not a lot of people talk about Nick News. And no. I I'm guilty too because I never liked the show either. But it's well, like well, a lot of us didn't want to see that as Sunday at 7 p.m. We kind of yeah. was already <laughs> and, and they and they always and they always put all the best Nick shows at the end at 6 30. Just for us to go, it's almost like when it turned nine o'clock on the yep. on a weekday, and it was Nick at night. Yep, and yeah. it was you know the Andy Griffin show, and that's when you when everything was black and white. That's when we knew it was time to go to bed. Yeah, it's and like, when, oh, it's flipper. Nick, I gotta when, go to sleep. When Nick yeah. News came on, we knew the weekend was over. Yep. Yeah. It was even though I enjoyed things like the Big Help and yes, and and all of those, and let's go outside and yeah, yeah. But right here, right now, yeah, those mm-hmm. are pretty good too. Oh yeah, yeah. There, there, there was something. There was so much special about Nickelodeon back then. Well, and, it just, and, I, it... and I and I love that you're trying to capture the entire feeling of it, uh, of the whole network. Yeah, that's we need more of that. What was you gonna say, Manny? I cut you off. I was gonna say like it's. I just feel like we connect with it better because Nick of the '80s and '90s were taking risks. Now mm-hmm. it's just the safe way out. And I think that's what resonates with fans like us who just constantly think that the 90s was a way better Nickelodeon network because throw anything to the wall and see what sticks. Not just like, oh, what's going to make the most money? We got to stake with this. So, yeah, that's the crazy I, part. Like the crazy part that I think other people don't look at either the amount of animators and artists that you had in bumpers alone. Yes. Oh, was, yeah. the, was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like I've seen a lot of, you know, we've already seen this, you know, the claymation stop motion after these messages will be right back. And, you know, like with NBC and ABC and they will all, you know, test the times for that. Or you'll see cartoon network to try to make a whole city of what do these cartoon characters do when they're not in the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that was clever. Yeah. That was it, awesome. But, but there will be points where in Nickelodeon where it's like, I was not expecting this, you know, stop motion creation of, I mean, I swear there's got to be at least 300 different ways they spell Nickelodeon in art. And mm-hmm. that's, that was amazing. And I would make the, I'll make the debate that Nickelodeon inspired the couch gag for the Simpsons to continue changing each and every episode because of the amount of bumpers that Nickelodeon had. 
Ooh. and I'm a huge Simpson fan. Man, that's a great theory too. Yeah. Wow, I never really thought about that. Like, think about all the other ones that say, "Hey, don't do the same thing over and over to cut costs. Just get newer independent animators to be able to do." bumpers and then they got their names and possibly even got onto other shows just because of that opportunity yeah i mean just like the yeah. doo-wop singers were singing nick 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 nick, nick, right. nick you know that got all over the place yeah and so few people know who they are everyone yeah, just I knows know. the song I mean, yeah. you, you're it's a diehard fan to know what, who, what their names are oh yeah all right oh uh, well let, let me ask you on, on just a icebreaker type question. Sure. Um, maybe not necessarily your top, because that's always such a hard question. What's your top three, blah, blah, blah. So I'll phrase it like this. Name three Nickelodeon shows that you just loved. They don't have to be in any particular order. Okay. Um. Well, first, it would definitely be I loved Hey Arnold. That's a very big inspiration for me. Um, I'm a, I'm a throw, I'm a throw one out of, out of nowhere. I've loved Kablam. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. That's not uh, out of nowhere. That's awesome. Henry, Henry, oh, yeah. Henry and June and actually now in life with Loopy and Prometheus and Bob and Sneez yes. and Fondue. Nah, 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 nah. And, and the, and the <laughs> offbeats. Yes. Yes. The yes. Offbeats. No, that was a short on Nickelodeon as well. I think mm -hmm. at the same time it mm -hmm. was running on Kablam. It was. So, and they, and they and had. They even... the... Go ahead, Kat. I was gonna say, was it a snick snack first? Uh, I don't know if it was a snick. I, it may have been a snick snack first, you, and you then know they what? put it, it over actually, in Kablam. For a little bit, it was because I remember that they would have these fifteen minute increments. It was like before they would premiere like a brand new all that, mm -hmm. or because yeah. remember snick at like eight o'clock, they would switch whatever the special was based on if it was a new episode from a new season, and they just would go that route. Like there was a point like a snick was all live action. It was that. And then mm -hmm. it would, you know, go back and forth. Like it'll be, it'll be like seven o'clock is what it'll do the last Nicktoon stuff. And then you got your, you know, are you afraid of dark? Your cousin Skeeters, your, um, you know, like if they did a double episode of all that or a dub or Alex Mack or anything that had like an hour special. For yeah. yeah. Hanger, that's what I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we've got Hey Arnold and we've got Kablam. What's uh, what's right. a third favorite? My third favorite would have to be, or I should say, a, one, a not necessarily the third favorite, but just a third one you love. Oh, a third one, uh, Nick Arcade. I yes. feel that it. I feel that um, it was short lived, and I feel that it should have been mm -hmm. longer. Than that. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I mean, and I'm not saying it because you know a film more or anything. It's just I remember running down the stairs for that. Did Phil Moore oh, yeah. tell you what he pitched to the Nick Studios for an episode sure of did. season three? He sure did. All all the stories that you know, I even heard the podcast interview for it. So, mm -hmm. yep, from that to Michael Malley, and I, I'm telling you, I've been I've been listening to you guys, even when you had the uh, <laughs> top ten, my brother and me, yes, uh, mm -hmm. portion, and I was, you know, of course, I had some look like, are you kidding me, man? Like, you know, I mean, that's that's me being a Nick person, but. <laughs> You know, I, I was thinking in my head, I was like, don't hold your breath. You know what I mean? That's how I was thinking. But yeah. <laughs> oh, it's I awesome. think you had a guest. I think you had a guest on there that was talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We had that we prime did. for prime nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. All right. Well, uh, we're we're gonna cut this here because we've got Another half of this episode coming up for all of you Slimesters. This is our first ever two-parter uh, episode, so we will take a quick commercial break here, but that'll be it for Mark for this episode. Go check him out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Uh, go check out his content. He's got some great stuff, uh, immensely talented, and also I'll put the Kickstarter there too, uh, so that way you guys can go support to get this whole experience, because it's not just an album, it's an experience, so all the support and all the love to Mark because we we need more of this in the Nick community. So thank you, Mark, for everything you do. This is so incredible. I'm so excited. And thank you for reaching out and asking to be here. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I love your podcast and love all you guys. So I appreciate you. We appreciate it's you. So great man. to have we you. Thank you. you. All right. Well, and that is going to be listen to great hip hop music. 
follow this guy. This guy is the best. Well, that is going to be it for Mark for now, but we are going to cut to a quick commercial break and then we'll be back in just a few minutes. So see you guys in a bit. We'll be right back after these messages. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of A Conversation With. If you are enjoying this episode, please hit the like button, subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell if you're watching on YouTube. If you are listening on a podcast app, then please leave us a review. These very simple actions on your part have a big impact for us, and we just cannot thank you guys enough for all of your continued support. It's time to put away the fall and winter clothes and start getting out the spring and summer clothes. And if you need to pick up some new shirts to go swag outdoors, then check out our bonfire page. Go to bonfire.com slash store slash splat attack store with hyphens in between. We've got all kinds of t-shirts along with a few other designs if you would like. But we have several that are splat attack originals along with some homages to some of the shows that we know and love. So go to our bonfire page page bonfire.com slash store slash splat attack store for your spring merch if you're a fellow content creator have an amazing collection or you're working on something very special that's nostalgic based we want to hear from you we'd love to have you on an episode of collector's corner or possibly an episode of conversation with make sure to get in touch with us over on instagram facebook uh, twitter just look for splat attack podcast or you can always send us an email at splatattack2021 at gmail.com. Not only do we want to shed a light on the network that we know and love, but we also want to shed some light and love to fellow fans and other creators, because we're all about building community here. So give us a shout. Let's see if we can't work together. If you enjoy the stuff that we've got going on on this channel, then you're going to love what we got over on our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash splatattack to get access to exclusive minisodes, as well as a backlog of exclusive main episodes, along with live streams twice a month, early access, and a whole lot more. So go to patreon.com slash splatattack. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we we lost Manny. I don't know where Manny went. He disappeared on us. And, uh, and we've also and had a costume change. I was going to say, wardrobe change. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for the second half of this episode, we are joined by Kristen Arisa, uh, who is... For all of us 90s Nick fans, uh, she was one of the main characters, played one of the main characters on The Tomorrow People, but also has had quite a varied career because she, you've been in like everything. Oh my goodness. Resume is very impressive. And, Thank uh, you. and I know there are some, some of these shows I'm going to have to see what you can remember of them like just because i know if i don't ask my I, I might end up being divorced because my wife will be you talked to her she was on these shows and you didn't ask her anything about them <laughs> but uh first for tomorrow people according to imdb you had a fluke uh that's so funny that imdb it, it's actually most of it is accurate i don't know who wrote it um but yeah, most of it's accurate. I, I had a fluke audition is what uh, landed me the role. So my sister, my one of my sisters, my oldest uh, sister, she and her um, husband, she, her then husband, they owned a modeling and talent agency uh, in Florida, Orlando, where I'm from. And I had zero interest in any of that. Didn't know, didn't care about any of that. Mm -hmm. um, and they had submitted my senior photo for this casting call. And I, she called me up and said, Hey, do you want to go in? And I had no idea. I hadn't acted. I didn't do that in high school. I was, um, I was the president of my class and I ran track and cross country and played basketball and, and uh, you know, just well-rounded in that way. But I, I honestly thought, um, theater was just all musicals and though I sing I was that was not what I thought but you know so I, I go to this um this audition 
not knowing what I'm doing. And, um, and then I got a call back for it. And the next thing I, knew, I, I booked it and it was, it was wild because they told me afterwards when I booked it, I can't remember if it was after shooting the pilot or when we went to London for the episode, but, um, something that I now know, like everyone's always watching in, in, in these rooms and these casting uh, sessions. And I guess I just walked in and to the woman who was playing my mother. And I just said very naturally, hi mom. And I guess they watched that and they saw that and they loved that. And I was just being me. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> um, and, and we just, you know, read the part and I guess they, they, they dug what I was doing, but yeah, that's how it started. Wow. That's so crazy. It is crazy. Actually, you know what? I did have one acting job before that. My parents owned a pool service and I, I remember being like, I don't know, 12, 13. And I was in one of their very, you know, those commercials, like very um, non-union commercials. Yeah, little, lo little local commercial, sure. Very local, very. So yeah, that actually was my first acting job ever. But okay. yeah. Okay. That's cool. I'm, that's still cool. I'm, we we get, always get excited because I'm, I'm very much in the theater community here in my uh, home. And I've seen so many of my friends on all kinds of local commercials. And it's still cool when you get to see them. It's like, absolutely oh, cool. I saw you on TV. Oh, yeah. You saw that uh, you, you saw that <laughs> lawyer commercial, did you? I said, yeah, I did. But uh, I still, I have tons of friends. We all do commercials. I mean, when you're out here, when you're acting, it's all under the umbrella of, of you know, storytelling. I feel. And so I always love it when I see my friends on commercials or different episodes. It's it's a wild ride out here, you know, but you stay in it long enough. You're going to hopefully, you know, have a career and, and be on, you know, have a, an extensive resume. Uh, you so, definitely extensive resume. Yes, <laughs> definitely. What you was were, you going to say, Kat? I was going to say, well, I mean, you were on Friends. You were on yes. NCIS, yes. Bosch, The Fosters, yes. Startup, American Horror Story. I can just go on and on like <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I guarantee what, you, anybody who's watching, you've seen something with her on it, and you probably don't even recognize it. She's been in everything. So but, uh, I, go ahead, Kat. Sorry. I have to ask about Friends, though. So how was that, was... that experience? Before we get, I mean, we're going to get back to the Tomorrow People we a are. little bit, but I have to ask about Friends. Friends so. was awesome. Um, so being a theater person, Friends was very much like theater because it's set, in, you know, it was a live studio audience. Mm -hmm. And we rehearsed for a couple of days before, you know, shooting live. And <laughs> I mean, I remember the table read and I was nervous. I mean, this is Friends. This is huge. And um, gosh, David Schwimmer and I actually got... <laughs> shushed a bunch of times we got in trouble because we were <laughs> cracking each other up and my scene wasn't even with him but we were just non-stop laughing and then they'd be rehearsing on another part of the sound stage and he and I really audibly had to be like quieted because we were I don't even know what cracking up but what I love so much um Matt LeBlanc was so nice and I remember before we went live he we were you know just off backstage and what did he say to me he was just something like you know you're ready to have some fun and and it was such an exhilarating feeling like everyone was so kind everyone was super nice and that that was you know at the time like such a highlight it's still such a highlight it's such a huge show and what I love now are you know there's this been this huge resurgence of watching these old shows as you said Alex like these old shows Grey's Anatomy that I've been on and in other shows and I have my friends who've got younger kids that are now like watching these shows They're like oh my gosh wait what you're on that and it just cracks me up because yeah these shows are they've been around they're they've they're still around and I love that they still have such a strong fan base but that show you know to answer your question Kat that was um a really Hi, that was a highlight it still is a highlight so much fun everyone was so much fun you mean matt didn't ask you how you doing <laughs> he did not oh but i do recall this too when i was i mean so many things 
Um, at the time, this is when Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were, I don't know if they were married or dating. I think married, they had to have been. And I was walking past and I just, I, I mean, he could have been looking at anything, but I like to say that Brad was looking at me and kind of did a double take when I walked past. I'm like, that's right. That's right. That was for me. <laughs> now, and that was going to be one of the shows that I was like, if I don't ask this, my wife will divorce me. So, so Kat, you, you saved me some Sorry. trouble there. You can no, have the next one. You're good. You're good. You're, you're you can ask him. Me. You're okay. Me. Okay. <laughs> um, but I did want to ask uh, for <laughs> tomorrow people, because that was your second acting gig. <laughs> and obviously we know that you, you said that you really weren't into that. You weren't interested at first. And now that's, I mean, you're, you're, you have a, a varied extensive career. What was it about acting that really gr grabbed you and made you want to go into this as a career? Oh, wow. It was, I knew that I, I mean, I love my parents very much and I love the family business. They've since, you know, sold it many years ago, but I knew I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then when this world opened up to me and it was that time in my life, I was, you know, um, junior, senior and in, in high school. And I didn't know yet what I wanted to do, but when I got this opportunity and I saw wow, I can do this because no one in my family was in the entertainment business, you know? Um, so I just didn't know this world existed. And then to be on set and to, and mind you, when I look at, I haven't seen the Tomorrow People in quite some time, but I've seen little clips that I'm like mortified because it's that those first <laughs> things I'm like, oh, this is, wow. I thought it was acting. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, just let me, let a word to the to the youths, a word to the wise. Acting is more than the ability to read. You know, mm -hmm. I think now a lot of people just feel like I can read, I can do that because we make it look so sexy and fun and 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 welcoming. But it's there's a skill set involved. So from doing that show, and I think there was, I just remember this one particular day. It was a really emotional scene that my character Lisa had, and. I, I just, there was a sense of just quiet on the set and everyone really just leaned in. And I don't know, it was just really special. And there was some, I mean, I almost got hypothermia on the set. We almost died one of these stunts. It was like wild, but um, <laughs> those were the Plung 90s. Like, plunging uh, into the ocean. Just yeah. having a kid oh, plunge into the it. ocean. Completely, like truly, this it was wild. We really were in the Pacific um, or the Atlantic. Wait, the Atlantic? God, Lord help me. This is why I'm an actor. I'm not. Yeah, you know. my geography is terrible too. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm there with you. Like, it's, it's one of those one of those giant bodies of water. But um, yeah, it was just so crazy. And I knew after that experience ended, I so I had to um, defer my freshman year of college because we were filming. And so, uh, although I'd been accepted to school, I, I had, to, and I hadn't declared a major yet, but I had to request that I could come in a semester late. And it was after that experience, that's when I applied to the school theater to audition for that, because I'm like, I know now this is what I want to do. Like there's absolutely without any doubt, this is what I'm supposed to do. So it, it really did. It, it, began this whole journey. So I do, I thank my sister all the time for it because I had no idea this world that was opened up to me, but i um, super, super appreciative and thankful that, that it, 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 you know, that it was. So fun. It's so fun. It's, uh, it's like perfect timing too, just because you had this experience acting mm -hmm. and then you discover that's what you wanted to do. And then you went and you trained for it and mm -hmm. then went, and you went back into the business. So Yeah, I think I, I know. So we shot the pilot in Florida and that was like just a week. And I like missed school for a week. And then that was it. I didn't know what happened. And then I got this call or my parents did. And I got this call saying the show has been, the series has been picked up. It's shooting in London. And a few other cast members have been recast, not you. Um, 
do you want to still do it? And I was like, wait, what? You know, it was, it was, the whole thing was just a, a mind blowing experience. And so, yeah. And after it was finished, when I knew that this is what I wanted to do and I was, I was still very competitive and, and all my, my, um, you know, friends from high school that are already starting college. And I want, I was homesick as well. Like my mom was only there. I was there for two months. I want to say in London. And my mom was only there for with me for like first couple of weeks. And then she had to get back. So I was there by myself, wow. you know, exploring this huge, beautiful city, like under the care of, you know, the hair and makeup ladies. <laughs> but oh, wow. I had my own, my own flat by myself. And I was just like, Oh, this is wild. But I did know I wanted to go back to school. I could have come straight to, to Los Angeles. I could have gone anywhere, but I, I think because I was still a very much a kid B I had no ties to New York or Los Angeles. And those two places were so terrifying to me. I was like, no, I need an anchor. I do want to go to school. And probably my parents were like, Oh, you're also going to school. But, um, <laughs> but they, they were, have always been 1000%, you know, supportive of my career and weren't in any way, like you need a backup. What's this theater degree that you're going for? <laughs> so um, it all worked out. I love that. I, so I, love I have, Go ahead, Kat, go ahead. I was going to say, I have to ask, um, I mean, The Tomorrow People is a sci-fi show for kids. Were you a fan of the genre? Was there something about the script and the characters that appealed to you? I knew nothing. I knew nothing. I read this script and I was like, wow. I mean, what kid hadn't thought of, I would love to teleport. It's like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Every kid wants superpowers. Yes. And so to like, in the midst of whatever you're, you're, you know, you're having this freak out moment and then all of a sudden you teleport, you're, you're, that's what happens. It, It was wild. I thought it was just so cool. And again, I had you know, you only grow up watching things on TV and and seeing these types of characters and you know that I could do that. So I think I didn't really have, there really wasn't much like script analysis back then. I was just like, oh, I can do this and and also get paid and this would be fantastic. And then being there and the costumes and we had, we filmed in in the ocean and then in a water tank for a little bit and on the beach and just these sets were so interesting to me like this interior of a spaceship I mean it was it was really really cool so I I don't think I I I can't recall that you know there was something specific about the character that drew me in but I just remember thinking well this would be really cool to just do I think and as if I'm putting myself back in my like 16, 17 year old brain. It was just like, this is, this sounds amazing. Yeah. It was just fun. I I absolutely love the fact that you went back to school for all this because there, we hear so many stories of like, of child actors who they had a big break Mm -hmm. and then either life just got too crazy for them and they crumbled for whatever reason or they've had immense success and then they've just stuck. They, they've become complacent with what they can do. And yeah. that's that's been their career. Or, or they become this big marketing giant. Uh, but it's so rare that you actually hear about somebody who's fell in love with it. And then went back to learn more about how to do this better. Yeah. And then Throw build the a career from it. That is so flipping awesome i i compl- i admire the hell out of you for that that's yeah. so awesome Thank you very much i mean i am super proud of my theater degree in fact my equity card was the first union that i joined that was the first um you know uh yeah that was my first union i love the stage i just did a play i try to do a play if i can um like once a year pandemic kind of threw a wrench in that but i was just at the guthrie theater last year doing a, a world premiere of a play. Like I love theater and to be able to really understand the craft of acting and, you know, the different methods, uh, it it meant a lot for me to do that. And not just that, to have the college experience, because what I find, and I know a lot of, of, of um, 
child actors out here, but you miss out on these huge and pivotal parts of your life. You know, um, on yeah. the one hand, yeah, you've got this great job and, and if this path is opened up to you, sure, take it. But man, college is such a great experience and a great time and it, it shapes so much of your life and, and how much you learn and scheduling and all this stuff and, and just becoming a, an adult. And in this business, because you're around so many adults as a child actor, it really puts you in a weird headspace because you're still this young person, but you're around grownups and grownups can't, you know, unlearn what they know, you know? And so I think that's where it gets really tricky for really younger actors um, in this business because they're surrounded by such an adult world, so much adult content. And for me, I, it was very important that I, I, that I really learn what I'm doing. Cause I, I very much wanted to do this. And, and I don't know if it was, it was a combination of that and a combination of nerves. Like I just knew that I was not ready for to be that far away from home without any family out here doing something that none of my family had really any, you know, core knowledge of it was just too 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 crazy so i'm so thankful for my decisions because sometimes you know you think back and like wow what would have happened if i would have come mm -hmm. straight out here after the tomorrow people but i i don't know i just i i think everything played out as it was supposed to and how it was meant to be uh and i'm i'm glad for the decision that i made to go to school and you know, and then and study theater and all the theaters that I've worked in to learn this and then now be out here. I've, you know, I've lived in a lot of places and, but acting's always been what I've done. And I'm even, you know, under with it, when you have to have like other side jobs and stuff like that. When I lived in New York, I, um, I was at, uh, uh, office temp at, you know, various places, but everywhere it was always because of acting is why I moved there. And that's, what I always did. I love it. I love, I love every bit of this already, Kristen. I love it. Um, <laughs> I do want to talk about your theater career. I do want to talk about that, but while we're still talking TV shows, yeah. uh, because another one that I know my wife's going to want me to ask about was uh, criminal minds. Do you re remember anything? Cause I mean, these are all like one episode things that you were a part yeah. of. I'm sure. They blend, they blend together. Is there anything about well doing that that you recall and what's funny is i always like to joke and say i've been on like pretty much every procedural drama yes <laughs> you were you were <laughs> yes i'm kind of salty that i was never on any of the um the um law and orders law and order like that was it i was like what and maybe there's still time i mean that show's still going yeah. um <laughs> criminal minds yes criminal minds that was with shamar moore yes i think yes yes okay um what do i remember about that one i played like a detective i think mm -hmm. i did. think at least that's what you're listening um, as. yeah i was a detective um i remember it was hot that day i do recall that because i was sweating in this burgundy dress shirt they had me in <laughs> Um, I don't remember much of that episode. Truth be told, I that one, that one does escape me. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, that's okay, and that's what okay. and that's what I figured because, like I said, the, oh my gosh, the the amount of <laughs> things that you've done, and so many of them are are like they were one episode things. So I'm like these got to bleed together at some point. They do. You know what though? My favorite of the like procedurals, or were the NCISs. Both, both the NCIS, the um, Navy one, and the NCIS Los Angeles. Like those two were my favorites um, of that like genre. Mainly the NC, the first, the main NCIS because Mark Harmon was such a is such an amazing person, and and that show showed me like how to be number one on the call sheet. Like wow, what a that guy just so kind just so generous his trailer door was truly always open unless he was like changing or something but you could just come in and sit and chat and I was on that like you do these um 
top of show guest stars. So you're there for like eight days or so, or like a little mm -hmm. better than a week. But that one I love because I got to play. I, it's not a spoiler alert. It's been on for a while. I was the villain. <laughs> and, and, but it was, I was the red herring because normally I don't get cast as the villain. I, um, but this one I did and it was so fun. I got to hold this English pistol and, but they, you know, they discovered my, that I killed someone. So, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So the one thing, there's a few things I should say, but one of the big things I don't like from sites like IMDb and film credits and stuff like that is if anybody's done theater, you don't really have a credit for that. No. And uh, yeah. and you had said that you got your start doing TV. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the first play that you did? In college? D what or, whichever well, what was the first one that you that you did the the, fir the first play it was like i don't even know if it was real it was called it was a little one act and it was called the fairy garden and but it was scripted and i was the fairy and we did this at this bar in tallahassee i want to say um called the milk bar maybe something weird like that but yeah I want to say that was like you know you do a lot of scenes and a lot of different things in acting classes but then the first like real, full play and then oh gosh what else in college like there were so many college ones I remember my first because I also I had an internship at the Alliance after I graduated I auditioned for the Alliance Theater in Atlanta and they had an internship program an acting internship program which is kind of like you're you were getting your MFA but instead of getting your degree you were getting um like equity points to go towards your to get your equity card and you understudied shows on the main stage and then we did our own productions as well and oh I should know this because I was just going back through a scrapbook the other day my parent, I was at my parents' house and they have everything. They have actually, I saw, I'm so bummed because we hadn't locked down this date, but one of the rap gifts from Tomorrow People was this tie that said it had, it was like a yellow skinny tie, a blue diamond that said the Tomorrow People in like red. And I think they signed like the back of mine and just said like teleport Lisa. Cause that was like, what, <laughs> yeah. what teleport Lisa, teleport. Teleport Lisa, teleport. teleport. <laughs> that's so cool um okay wait but I, I can't remember the first play i should know this i can't it'll come back to me it's in a lot of theater do you have any interest in directing or writing or have you directed or written anything? i've directed some plays just like smaller things um actually i had we had in new york some grad friends of mine and i we started a theater company and i directed one of our like one acts that was ages ago and then most recently out here, I directed um, a, just a small, also a one act. Like that's, it is something that's always interested me. Um, so I'd love to do more of that and just keep doing that. And then writing, I I do write. I'm, I'm working on, a, on something right now um, that's like early days of just like got 10 pages or so in, but plugging away at that. It's like when you're, when the arts are in you, I feel like, again, like it's all under this umbrella, you know, and you, hopefully it, you're learning about so many different avenues, you know, um, because you kind of have to, and, and other things will pique your interest. I do voiceover and narration and audiobooks, And again, it's all storytelling to me, every part of it, commercials, everything I do, it's just, you know, all different ways to play. Um, in front of the camera or behind the camera or on stage or whatever. And I just love it. So yeah, I'm like dabbling. It's, I, I'm, I'm, it's so funny. I, it's easier for me to obviously say I'm an actor uh, because that's what I've been doing. And the writing portion, it's like when you're just, I'm just not as trained in that medium yet, but I'm, I, you know, I've got some ideas cooking. So I'm just trying to be diligent about getting them out. Very cool. I mean, it's all creative, <clears throat> creative expression and storytelling. Totally. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
uh, what is and I, I know this is a, a probably a loaded question, so I'll, we'll just stick with not necessarily the most, but just one that you can think of. What has been one of your most challenging performances that you've done in in, in any medium? I'll I'll say it was this last um, this last play that I just did at the Guthrie. It was a world premiere of a new play from um, Susan Laurie Parks, who's a uh, Pulitzer Prize winning, now Tony Award winning uh, playwright. And um, this was a new play and it was, it's called Sally and Tom and I played Sally and it's about, it's kind of a play within a play within a play. Uh, it's about Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson and I played Sally Hemings. And so that getting uh, that world and then just the play within the play and I think also working, the playwright was there back and forth between New York and, and coming to Minnesota. And so there's a lot of changes because it's a new play. And though they'd workshopped it before, um, being in that process and like, full, like honestly, mm, I wanna say the days before opening night, like literally hours before, like 13 pages of the play got yanked and rearranged and like just things being cut left and right. And it's just like, oh gosh, and you're, it's not on camera. It's mm -hmm. live in front of the Guthrie sat that the stage that we were in sat 800 people. Wow. Um, so it's, it's like, oh my gosh. And it was challenging in the best way because you really, it, you're so in it. And a lot of times with film and TV, you don't have, at least in my experience, you know, th you don't have this lengthy process or this lengthy amount of time with a script to really like get underneath it the way you can with with um, theater. And so that one was like super challenging in the best way. Like sh it, it illuminated so much for me. I again, just why I love what we do. And I love actors so much. And I just love the collaborative process with working with the director, working with just everybody involved. It really is such a collaboration because when you, when you have that collection of people that you know everybody's on their A game, that everybody is like not coming to mess around, you know, mm -hmm. then you're just bouncing ideas and trying new things. And gosh, that feels so good. It's so exciting to do. So that one would be, I think, overall. And there was, there's a TV one that actually did pose a, quite a bit of challenge. Um, there's a show, it's off the air now called The Unit. And mm -hmm. um, uh, it starred um, Dennis Haysbert and, and um, oh my gosh, my favorite, I can see him, it's clear as day. Uh, Hold on. Why can't I think of his name? We'll get up um, right now. We're stealthily Googling. Yeah, do that because I don't have my other computer out. Um, um, Regina Taylor? No, no. It was called The Unit. And mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, no, it was um, Scott mm -hmm. Foley? Scott, yes. Lord, and I love him. Scott Foley. And, and that, to, uh, you know, that my episode, or my scene, I was being told that my husband had just been killed in combat. And so it was a very, very emotional scene. Now, I do a lot of emotional stuff. I swear all those procedurals, I'm like crying in pretty much probably every one of them, or, or almost. <laughs> I like to say this about procedurals, you're either crying or you're dying. Like that's that's what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, yes. you know, Sounds about right. It's kind of, it's kind of right. Um, but this one, because it was like a lot of takes of that a lot of coverage and a lot of takes of that and it was very like just to be told you know that someone that you love in that particular case my husband had been killed in combat so it was just like wow and I remember that audition for that um and I remember the cast director going after we did it twice she goes she just kind of leaned in she's like can you do that like a lot more and I go yeah, because I, I knew what I was thinking of. I knew I had 
my inner thoughts that I already knew who this person was and, and, you know, I already built that. So it was no problem for me, but yeah, I think initially when I saw this, I was like, Oh wow. Okay. Cause again, this is what I mean by like this, what we do, what actors do it, it's, it's a skill set. It's, it, mm -hmm. it, you have to, it's more than just being able to read words off a, off a page. That and had to have been emotionally exhausting by the yeah. end of the day really was i was super tired yes yeah do, do you ever have trouble then sort of like leaving work at work and like saying goodbye to certain characters sometimes yeah sometimes it is a little harder like i think this why i keep speaking about this the play that i just finished so much because it was the most recent um but also it was such a heavy play and character and the end of that play was so beautiful and some days man it just i was like i it was a lot and you have to just really like try to purposely breathe and release it and let it go mm -hmm. um and sometimes it's easier to be like okay peace out <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that was fun gosh i've i've had some good stuff startup was fun we, you know, this um, Netflix, well, it was a crackle series that went on to ne Netflix, like during the pandemic. And that was awesome, too. That one was, yeah, that was challenging, too. And in different ways. How uh, is the... Go ahead. Go ahead. I can wait. How is the How has the audition process changed for you, like, since the pandemic? Are you doing more self-tapes versus in-person auditions? And how does that affect how you need to prepare for your auditions and to oh, present my. yourself in those situations? Great question. Um, I've booked a few things off tape, but there it's different than in the room. You know, I just actually had an, uh, an in-person last week, which was probably my first in-person theatrical since, since the pandemic, like commercially you you're going in all the time. Like that's not a problem, but, um, yeah, it's a ton of self tapes, you know, on the one hand, it's great. You, you have more control of it. And if you don't like a take, or, you know, it takes a few to get out before you're, you know, you get cooking, then that's all you. And it's great in that way. I think where it's, it's not serving people because you do get used to just, you can do it as many times as you want. And that's not reality of, of this business or when you're in a room, when we do go back to that, those scenarios, you're not, you, you, you better have this stuff like worked out, you know, it's, you can't, you can't do that there, but also it puts us at a disadvantage as actors because we're now having to do everything. You know, I'm not only having to, think about this character i've got to now think about the lighting and i've got to think about my camera angles and i've got to think about all these other things and then you're you're putting you know in my case a lot of times it's my husband but i you know you have a group of friends who are also doing the same thing but you're that's someone else's time that you're having to now use and it's never 15 minutes or 30 minutes whereas if you went into a room it'd be like 10 15 minutes and Thank you. And that's it. And I think it's hard to, you know, quote unquote, win the room when mm -hmm. you all you have is self tape and a it's not a guarantee that that tape is even being seen because now, you know, it's a beautiful thing that they, I, I don't believe in a scarcity mentality. I, I believe there's a, enough work for everyone, but you got tapes coming in from across the globe, all over the world. No one person or one casting office casting a show that has multiple, you know, characters that when you're getting thousands of, of, of um, submissions for multiple characters, there's just no way anyone can watch that. Yeah. So I, you know, I think self to, it, it really has changed the shape of this business. Um, I don't know. I don't necessarily think for the best. I mean, again, I have booked some stuff off tape for sure. Happy about that. But I, I also know that it's a couple of those were because of relationships that I built 
from being out here and being in, be able to see them in person over the years. Yeah. So now they've already called me and they already know, and that's that benefit, you know, and I don't know, I, I, I'd like to believe that, that people are, or that casting and producers and showrunners are still searching for newer talent and trying to discover, you know, uh, people that they haven't seen before. Um, but um, there's no guarantee, uh, you know, if you're going in, you know, that you're, you're being watched through the entirety of yes. whatever the stage is. And now it can be, you, you know, play can be pushed and then who knows, maybe five seconds were watched, maybe the whole minute, who knows? So, yeah, I don't like that portion of the program. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've only got one more question and uh, this is more for my, my theater peeps because uh, I've, I've, been doing community like i said i've done i've done community theater for a while and i've seen a lot of wonderful people and i have seen a lot of people who have been going through a lot emotionally and at home mm -hmm. and i've seen people who can that they, they they completely buckle during a rehearsal mm -hmm. uh where they would start to do it start to do the scene and then they would just collapse and say i can't do this i can't do this and then i've seen the other way around uh, where they've been able to utilize that for their scene. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, for people who are going through a lot emotionally at home and they have to do a performance, what advice would you give? At least in terms of doing the job of a show. Bring it all in. It's the only thing you can do. You fold all of that in. Whatever's happening. Like I, I an easy the easiest way to say this is okay, you have your audition or you're about to go on stage or about to go in the room, whatever the case may be, and you are nervous, you are sweating. Rather than try to be like, oh my God, I gotta calm these nerves, I can't sweat. Your character's sweating, guess what? That's what's happening. You know what? That's, you, you utilize it all. It will ultimately all serve you for whatever the role is. Even if it's a comedic role and you are struggling and you're having to, you, you fold, you utilize all of that. It will, it'll make whatever the performance 100% more real. And you will, I don't know how it just, you will, it will find its way in and, you know, in and out. That's why I liken it to just sweating. You know, that's what's yeah. happening. I'm if Kristen's sweating, the character's sweating too. And I find if, if I'm nervous, then she's nervous about other, whatever it is, but she's nervous. You have to, rather than trying to bury it, because the more you focus on whatever the problem is, you're not, you're not uh, escaping the problem. It's the problem's not getting ignored. In fact, it's just getting worse, you know, yeah. you're, so just use it. That's, that would be, that is my advice. Just use Channel. it. Channel the energy into the performance rather than try to pretend that it doesn't yeah, exist. Exactly. You have to. Mm -hmm. You just, I think you have to. Well, fully, fully, fully agree. And like I said, I've seen others who do that, but uh, I, I hope, I'm actually hoping to get a lot of my theater friends who are, are fairly new. Like come come check this interview out because Kristen is awesome and she's got some great advice. So uh, uh, I I absolutely love that. I love doing community theater. Uh, and um, no, I I take that back. I do have one more question. Then we'll then we'll hang it up. Go for it. But sure. um, what is something that you like specifically about theater and uh, about doing? Uh, recorded performances. So, what what's uh, something specific you like about each one? Hmm. Specific to each one. Um. Well, I love the immediacy of theater. Mm -hmm. I love that the audience is right there, and that it can ch it changes nightly. It changes moment to moment. It, it's it's the same play. It's the same words, but it will never ever be the same. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love just the the energy that an uh, that an audience can give you and though they are another character as well and i love that um uh, and then for like recorded stuff um man I, I i like how 
it's just the like I I do like how under everything is. I I like how mm, you have to almost be more concise with your with your expressions with everything you I not articulating this the best, but I think I love and appreciate how just, it's not that you're not dialed in for theater performances, but gosh, just, you have to be so like keyed in, just like right here to- yeah. Whereas theater, yeah. you have to be bigger because you, you have really to be able to see across the, you have to be seen across this giant auditorium. Whereas in film and television, you can be a lot, you often have to be a lot more subtle. Yeah. You have to draw the cast much, is it, coming in. Yeah. You, and, instead of go ahead. I said, it, um, it sounds like instead of projecting out, you're sort of welcoming the audience in. Yeah. There's a different you, exchange there. Definitely there is. And it's, they can really see in your eyes and really see your expression and, and, you know, all of that. I, I love that about it. I think I, I also love, I like the tech, I do like the technical aspect of it. It's a fully different medium. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I like, I have enjoyed learning the technical nuances of of you know camera being on camera and just that that recorded side of it that's awesome gosh i i love this i love every bit of this Kristen. you're this nerding so out cool. so hard i right am now. i'm absolutely because <laughs> well, i mean as much as we've loved doing this i've i've not really gotten to talk to somebody who's done a lot of theater before and and this true. is so that i'm i'm super excited about all this it's like oh i get to i have a link from tomorrow people to theater and i get to talk about this today it's so fun that makes me happy too honestly i love i love it i love what we do i think what we do is so amazing i really do believe that you know the arts change lives and heal people and mm -hmm. save people's lives you know yeah. just seen it be, seen it happen yeah. yes fully agreed being able to see yourself either you know on the other side of that lens mm -hmm. or see someone new that you're like wow i didn't even know it just brings people closer it brings the world closer to you and i mm -hmm. just love 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 what we what we do I'm so happy. <laughs> I am too. Like truly, I didn't know where this, this, is this great. whole interview was gonna go or whatever. I mean, again, like tomorrow people was a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. And so much fun. Again, I I'm it's brought me, it's you know, it's taken me that little show <laughs> has done so much for me. Um, in terms of just like the world that it it cracked open for me. I'm forever thankful. <laughs> to so, uh to doing that oh my gosh hilarious all right well i am officially going to start wrapping the episode up now so thank you okay. uh thank you mark earlier from in this episode for taking the time to be here and share with us all of your exciting adventures thank you Kristen, for taking the time to come chat with us about some of your highlights and uh <laughs> what you love so much about performing it's it's infectious and I love it. So thank you so very thank much. Thank you. My it. pleasure. Thank you for having me guys. My pleasure. And I'll, for all of you Slimesters stick around. We'll see you guys next week with some more spot attack, retro horrific fun. So we'll spot you guys later. <laughs> Bye. 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 I mean, I'm not being biased Thanks. here. When it comes to Nickelodeon, you guys are the best podcast, just hands down. Thank you. Wow. Just because I just because I know you know the stuff. Sometimes it, you know, like with other podcasts where they try to cover it, I can tell they don't know it, and I and I can also tell that you know they Wikipedia this, yeah. And then you know try to do the or 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 the new thing. They go and look on YouTube for people who are enthusiasts of this mm -hmm. and find the. 107 facts you didn't know about. Oh, gosh. Oh, yes. Channel oh. of Frederator. Oh.